Story <laughs> number four. Story number four, we're going to go to Jean Gruss. Um, Jean, this is a story coming out of the Miami Herald. I'll read you the headline, I'll read you the first couple of graphs, and I want you to comment. This is where we're going to kind of get um, into some stuff that isn't necessarily exciting, but chances are we're going to make this conversation uh, pretty interesting. Um, just to set, set the scene for everybody, uh, effectively, we had a tower that collapsed in Surfside. It was located on the barrier island of uh, Miami, uh, Miami-Dade County Barrier Island, located between Miami Beach and Bell Harbor and um, uh, Sunny House Beach. Uh, name of the tower was Champlain Tower South. As a result of its collapse, we've seen all kinds of changes in insurance. We've seen all kinds of lawsuits. Everybody's suing each other. Uh, some of these condominium associations, the older ones, they're being forced to uh, effectively search for new insurance. Individual unit owners have seen their prices spike. So we got a lot of stuff going on with insurance. Some would call it an uh, emergency or possibly even a disaster right now. But that being said, um, Jean Gris, let me read you the headline. First couple graphs, and I want you to comment. Headline, coming out of the Miami Herald. Did lawsuits drive Florida's insurance crisis? The evidence remains thin. First couple graphs. Barbara Glover nearly missed being crushed by an oak tree that fell through her roof during Hurricane Ian last year. As she fled her Tampa home of 35 years, clutching nothing but a duffel bag of clothes, she knew what to do next. She called her insurance company, Universal Property and Casualty, and she waited for them to make her whole. After months, months of feeling junked around by the company and seeing her home condemned by the city, she took her case to court in February. Glover became one of 4,571 people, about 15 per day, to sue Universal this year. The property insurance premiums rose to become a full-blown crisis for Floridians in recent years. Primary response by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and state legislatures is to stamp out those lawsuits. But five years into the crisis, the evidence that lawsuits caused Floridians' premiums to skyrocket and caused 13 insurers to go out of business hasn't materialized. Litigation has yet to be found to be the cause of a single insurance company's failure. Despite cracking down on litigation, premiums are still going up, and the industry now says they won't go down for the foreseeable future because of factors such as climate change that are out of their control. Mr. Gross, is this just highway robbery, or is there something that maybe we're overlooking based on the fact that the argument was everybody's suing the insurance companies, therefore they're getting uh, built, uh, they can't afford to, sit, to stay around, and therefore they're disappearing, or they really need the state to jack up the prices. Everybody's gone to the citizens, which is the insurer of less resort. This to me sounds like a snow job based on what the Miami Herald uh, is reporting. But uh, what, what what say you? Well, I mean, the Florida's insurance crisis has been going on for like 30 years. It's kept it's kept business writers like me on the payroll, uh, thanks to a never ending stream of crises. Uh, I mean, it's 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 just a mess. But basically, it boils down to sort of a toxic brew of, you know, um, lawsuits uh uh and you got fraud and and hurricanes and storms that do tremendous amount of damage so those three things combined have just turned uh the insurance and the homeowners insurance uh into a mess in florida and, and the fact of the matter is is this thing's been studied pretty extensively uh by uh by academics too i i think uh just recently uh florida international university <clears throat> uh uh, just uh, came out with a study on on um, the, the effect of of lawsuits uh, on the insurance industry uh, here in Florida, the homeowners insurance industry, and um, you know the the numbers are pretty staggering. I mean, even though uh, you know, I mean, so, something like seventy nine percent of the uh, homeowners insurance uh, lawsuits uh, uh, emanate from Florida. So I mean, this is like a huge problem for the industry. Um, you have a bunch of undercapitalized small companies uh, because the state has wanted to offload uh, citizens' policies, citizens being the insurer, the state's insurer last resort. Uh, they've been offloading them to these undercapitalized companies. When there's a big storm, like the one we had last year, Hurricane Ian, um, you know, these, these small undercapitalized companies can't handle the massive claims that uh, arise out of these storms. Um, because they just don't have the manpower and they don't have the financial resources. And so what happens is you have a bunch of, of uh, very unhappy customers um, who uh, often uh, really don't understand their policies uh, because uh, a lot of times now, her, her, um, you know, homeowners' policies don't cover a lot of things like wind. They only cover a certain, um, certain amount of the damage. Uh, you add in construction costs that now have gone through the roof. Um, Literally, <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, I mean, um, you know, there's no way that if you bought homeowners insurance, you know, five years ago and kept sort of kept the same 
replacement costs, there's no, there's no way that you'd be able to build a new house today because the, because it costs so much more to build. So I mean, you got, you got all these problems and, um, you know, it's just a no easy solution. And, you know, it's easy, it's easy to, for it to become a political hot potato too. Um, you know, clearly the, um, I, you know, the Republican dominated state legislature has it out for the trial, uh, the trial bar, uh, uh, the lawyers and, um, you know, they've turned it into a political mission to basically, you know, shut that business down. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure that that's going to solve the problem, but, um, it's, it's, uh, it's certainly, uh, uh, you know, a never ending, uh, crisis. We go from year to year and, um, it never ends. And so anyway, we will be writing about it and talking about it forever. It's, it's Ms. M M Mr. Gruce um, and, the, and the rest of the uh, roundtable, um, we don't have state income tax in Florida. And as a result of that, a lot of the money that goes into the coffers to run governments, to run the schools, to run the city. So both on a county, on a school uh, um, level and on a city level and even uh, the state, a lot of it comes from real estate transactions, real estate valuations. Um, do you think if we had state income tax, uh, lo and behold, uh, you wouldn't have so much pressure? to keep the real estate uh, uh, carnival going on and on and on because if real estate slows down, all of a sudden the revenue slow down and therefore a lot of these entities aren't going to be able to do and run uh, and operate with the budgets they currently have. Any, any thoughts to that? The, the business of Florida is real estate. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> clearly um, uh, that, that's, that's uh, you know, uh, that's why we have tourism is to bring, bring people here to buy real estate. <laughs> That's why we spend so much on tours. So, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, the, who, who's taxing whom uh, is is really, um, you know, it's. I mean, I I don't know that there's like a clear answer to that, but uh, certainly, um, you know, uh, keeping keeping the real estate business uh, afloat is is a key to Florida's uh, economy, and you know, basically figuring out fixing the insurance. And, and the way it is now is actually citizens basically subsidizes, uh, Floridians, uh, with, with this, um, you know, state owned insurance company basically. So, I mean, that, that's the truth of it. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause we'd be paying a lot more if, um, if we didn't have citizens. Good point. Good point.